Hi, I'm Matthew Clemens with Preservation Tree Services. Today I would like to introduce you to our Seasons Liquid Compost Extract by showing you the forest floor and native tree environments and comparing them with the reality of our commercial and residential maintained landscapes. Right now we're in a, an urban forest that has been allowed to keep much of its native uh, flora and fauna and it's, it's created a situation where it can feed itself, contain itself, it gets everything that it needs from natural biological activity. This is just a handful of forest floor and in this handful of material we've got all sorts of living things that are working together to break this material down. This white dusty material on the surface of this is actually bacteria. Um, that's another part of the soil food web. So this, this bacteria is helping to release quite a bit of nitrogen actually. You see this white stringy material? That's fungal hyphae. What that is doing is it's breaking down this organic matter. This old piece of, of log has become a very, very hospitable uh, root zone environment. You can see the feeder roots from some of these trees have uh, become very, very prolific in this organic matter. And it's these feeder roots that exist in the top three, four inches of soil that are responsible for moving the bulk, if not all, of the water and nutrients from the soil up to the canopy of the tree. All of these things combined are known as the soil food web. All of these components were working together to break down organic matter, uh, prepare the soil, and make available and make ready the nutrients that are, in, that are already in the soil uh, for use for the trees, the shrubs, the ground covers. It's all working together. And when you have these systems that are in place, you don't have a lot of disease problems or pest problems that run out of control or the need to import high, so, high salt fertilizers, high nitrogen fertilizers, um, that becomes unnecessary when, when the system, the soil food web is allowed to behave the way it wants to behave. I want to set, take a sample real quick, see if we can't get a good soil profile. Look how deep and rich this is. And soft, not compacted. I didn't labor to stick this down into the soil. And also, this soil is heavy clay, which is what most of us have in the Metroplex. Some people think clay soil is terrible, but with all the right components, clay soil has been the perfect media for this entire forest. What I want to show here is that these are nice, large surface area, dark green leaves that have no real deficiency at all. I mean, you can see shoot elongation here from this year looks like eight already 18 inches or so that's all this year's growth all that green right there i also find it interesting that there are no real lesions on these leaves that you would expect to see there's no fungal pathogen that's taking this tree out you do, however, see some insect activity, but it's not enough to worry about. It certainly hasn't taken anything away from the overall health of the tree, and it certainly hasn't uh, made me feel like we need to come in with any high-impact pesticides and knock out any large populations of, of pests. 
So overall, I feel like this tree has been allowed to do what it wants to do, and it looks great. I mean, I'd be happy to have this kind of growth in my residential situation. Most people would. Here we are looking at another mature pecan tree that is very different from the tree that we just looked at in its native setting. Instead, we're looking at a tree that is sitting in a field, a sports field, dominated by one species of, of turf grass. The ground below the tree has been severely compacted with absolutely no buffer between uh, human foot traffic and the soil below. And you can see that this tree, uh, by evidence of the small leaf surface area, the tip decline and dieback, the increased amount of dead wood, and the way that the foliage is hugging the branching of the tree, we know right away that this tree is not happy and it's in severe decline. I can only go down about three inches here. And remember, in the forest floor, the top one to four inches is where we found all of those active feeding roots. We can get down three inches before this soil will not allow the probe to travel any deeper and we see just about nothing here. No roots, no insect activity, no biological diversity of any kind. We have about three inches, maybe two inches, of shoot elongation this year. Back in the native setting, we were looking at a good 18 inches of shoot elongation. That is a huge difference. Okay, here we are in a very typical residential landscape setting. We've got a nice, beautiful green lawn. We've got shrub beds behind us, and we've got a rather intermediate native tree, native species tree. This tree's probably been in the ground about four or five years. From the looks of it, it hasn't really done anything since it was installed. Now, part of the challenge that we have in a typical setting like this, in bringing the forest floor to this site, is that the forest floor and the activities of the forest floor don't really lend itself to maintaining a nice green turf or maintaining nice even bed lines, which is really the, the goal of the average homeowner or average commercial business. But we've found a way to bottle it up and bring it to this landscape.